my name is Justin, and in this screencast I'm going to show you how to install Dynamail 5. Um, the first thing you want to do is actually download Dynamail. I'm on the Dynamail support site's homepage right now, and all you have to do is go to the download section and uh, download Dynamail. Uh, here's the link right here, so I'm going to click on that. Groovy. Um, you also want to uh, download the helper script and uh, that's done by just right clicking uh, the link um, labeled uncompressed underscore data dot CGI. Um, I'm right clicking and uh, selecting save link as uh, just because it's a text file and uh, you don't want to open up in your uh, web browser something like that. You actually just want to download it. Now what we have to do is upload both these files into our site's uh, CGI dash bin. Um, I'm going to do this by using a program called transmit. So let me start that program really quick. I'm going to connect them to my hosting account. And I'm going to navigate to my CGI dash bin. Um, for me, my CGI dash bin is in my public HTML directory, which is right here. And there's my CGI dash bin. On my desktop computer, I'm just going to go to where those files were downloaded, select them, and just drag and drop them in, into my CGI dash bin. Might take a few seconds for these to upload. Once the files have been uploaded to your CGI dashboard, you'll need to change the permissions of the uncompressed data.cgi file to 755. There's a few ways to do this in transmit. One is to select the file, type in Apple I, and uh, that'll bring up this modal menu, and you'll just have to check all the checkboxes next to execute. Just make sure this value is 755 and click apply. You can also get to that modal menu by going to file, get info. Great, once that uh, file is changed its permissions, you want to visit it in your web browser. Um, since um, I have installed the uncompressed data.cgi file in my CGI dash bin, and uh, my domain is called datademo.com, I would go to datademo.com slash CGI dash bin slash uncompressed dot underscore data.cgi. So this uh, little utility script will uncompress the distribution, uh, change the files, change the permissions of some files we need, and uh, move the installer so it's enabled. Um, once it's done its business, uh, click this enormous link um, labeled install and configure .ml, and that'll bring us to the actual installer. So the first thing the installer asks me is if I want to install .ml or upgrade it. In this screencast, I'm showing you how to install .ml, so just make sure installation is selected and click the continue button. Once the screen has refreshed, it should show you another form with a whole bunch of things that you can fill out. Don't worry, it's not as hard as it looks, I'll walk you through it. Um, the first thing it wants to know is where the data files directory location is. Um, this is the directory that .ml saves a whole bunch of things. Um, it's configuration. Um, temporary files, backup files, things like that. There's two choices you can pick. Um, one is auto, which uh, just uh, Datamail will pick a directory for you. In this case, it has chosen my home directory, which is a great place to put your data files directory. Um, and if you don't want it there, you can select manual and uh, just type in the path of another location you'd like the data files to be. I'm going to put this back to auto because that looks great to me and move on. The next thing it wants to know is where the URL of um, my .ml is. It will, again, pre-fill this out to its best guess and just double check, make sure it looks good to you. If it does, um, go to the next uh, form field. The next thing the installer wants to know is what your .ml root password is. The .ml root password is used to uh, create new lists and also to log in into any existing mailing list that you might have. So I'm going to pick a really strong Dynamail root password, retype it so I know I'm typing it correctly, and move on. Not so bad. The next thing uh, we have to do is choose the Dynamail backend. Now, uh, Dynamail supports a whole bunch of different backends. Um, it'll support MySQL, uh, Postgres, SQLite, and something called the default backend, which is a uh, just a bunch of different files and directories that uh, make up your, your mailing lists. For this uh, demo, I'm going to actually use a MySQL backend, but uh, I really urge you to use either the MySQL or the PostgreSQL backend. 
Now to use this, um, I do have to fill out a database username and password. Um, and that also means I have to create a new database and put a user to it. And I'm going to do that in my uh, cPanel. So I'm going to go change tabs to my cPanel. And uh, in the find box, I'm just going to type in MySQL. And in the search results, I'm going to click on the button labeled MySQL Database Wizard. And uh, this bunch of screens actually allows you to create a database and a user for the database, kind of in one fell swoop, which is nice. So the first thing it wants me to do is pick a name. So I'm going to write in data, mail, data demo underscore data. Great. And then it just asks, uh, asks me to create a user. And I'm just going to click uh, type in data demo underscore data. Nice and simple. And uh, have it generate a password for me. And I'm going to actually uh, copy that and uh, open up a new text file and just save it for later. And back in uh, the cPanel, I'll uh, click Create User. Great, and uh, where it asks me which permissions I should give it, uh, just select All Permissions. Fantastic. Um, now I can go back to um, the Dynamail installer and copy and paste all this information in. So first is the database. I'll just copy that, and in the installer, oops, I'm sorry, and in the installer, uh, paste in the database, and then same thing for the username. In this example, they're the same. There you go. And then the password, which I saved in this text file. Great. Okay, we just uh, set up the Dynamail backend for us. Um, the next thing is optional. Um, you can select to install a bunch of plugins and extensions for Dynamail. These kind of uh, extend some of the functionality of Dynamail. And as you can see, right off the bat, it will already install a bunch of the plugins and extensions right off the bat, which is great. Um, one of the ones we, you want to pay particular um, attention to is the first one called Mailing Monitor Plugin. And uh, we're going to make sure to install that. And uh, as you see, it, it also requires us to um, configure a cron job Hmm, okay, we'll revisit that, and uh, later on in this demo, I'll show you exactly how you do that. Because if you see, there's a few other plugins that require you to set up a cron job. Okay, I'm going to look this up uh, one more time, make sure I plugged in everything correctly. Looks pretty good. And if I'm happy, I'm going to click the Configure Dynamail button. If all goes to plan, it should go back saying, hey, I did it, um, which it did. If you want the gory details, it'll give you that. Hmm, looks good to me. And uh, just click the button that says move the data installer directory and disable the install script. Um, you want to do that so that someone else can't you know, come back and re reconfigure and reinstall the data mail. Great, and uh, once you're done, you can uh, click this button to so start working with data mail. Great, and I mean, let's, uh, let's create a new list. So please agree to the good new public license. Type in your data mail password and set up a new mailing list. Choose a list name. I'm going to call it Justin's List. Um, set a list short name. I'm going to just use J. And a new password, a secret password. Um, set a list owner email address. Type in the description. A privacy policy. Please, when you make an actual mailing list, um, create an actual privacy policy and a physical address again um, please use a real address once it's done just click the button that says create your mail list and again if all goes well I will have created a new mail list so, I mean, shortly, that's uh, that's how you create an email list once you have Dynamail installed. No worries. Um, you can please then uh, log into your email list. And this is the Dynamail list control panel. Um, if I want, I can send out an email list. I can uh, invite new subscribers. Um, right now, we're going to install that. Uh, we're going to configure that cron job for uh, the mailing monitor. So, on the left-hand menu, once you scroll down until you see the heading for plugins 
and then find the mailing monitor, which is right there, and click that. Now the mailing monitor is a, a simple little script, but it's very, very important. Um, Long-running processes um, that run on your web, web host um, sometimes uh, drop. They, they stop working um, either because they, they run too long or they take up memory, things like that. So in Dynamail, there's something called the mailing monitor that looks for these things. And if uh, something looks wrong, it'll actually pick up the mailing right where it left off, which is great. Um, to do this, though, you have to set something called a cron job, which is just a fancy word for a scheduled task to, uh, to let the web server know that it has to run this thing every once in a while periodically. So what you need to do is just find the text box labeled curl command example, example for a cron job, um, copy the text that's in there, and uh, again, we'll go to our cPanel, and we'll go back to that home screen. And in that file box, look for curl, I'm sorry, cron, and uh, click the button. Great, and where it says add a new cron job, and under common settings, select every five minutes, and where it says command, paste um, that command we uh, copied from Donna, and just click the button add new cron job. Great, all set. So just to recap this screencast, um, we just uh, installed Dynamail. Um, that means we downloaded Dynamail, we uploaded those files to our CGI dash bin, we ran that helper script, um, we also then uh, used the Dynamail installer to actually configure our Dynamail, we created a new mailing list once we installed Dynamail, and then we uh, set the cron job for one of the plugins called Mailing Monitor so that our mass mailing should go out without hitch. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please uh, add a comment to the screencast. Um, you can also visit the Dynamail support site at datamailproject.com. Um, and if you have additional questions, please use the forums on that website itself. Again, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.